Hello, and welcome to Comic Centric, issues number 10. I'm your host, Cruz, and let's celebrate the fact that we are double digits, issue number 10. That's a pretty milestone. Didn't think I was going to make it past two. To celebrate, we're going to have one of my friends and favorite poet laureates, Nikolai Garcia. Nick grew up in South Central and has been writing about his experiences in life, and he will get to share with us these experiences coming up. So stick around and listen. And we're back again. Joining us here is our friend Peter. And with us today is the nomadic poet laureate of South Central, comic dad, and sometimes he makes friends on social media, Nikolai Garcia. Say hello, Nikolai. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for being on. Um, first question, do you like comics? I love comics. All right. Thank you for being here. <laughs> That's usually how I start things off, but um, let's start off by what are you reading right now? Um, I pick up a lot of books mm -hmm. from Pete. I rarely read, read them. <laughs> um, I get, what do I get? I get Green Lantern, mm -hmm. I get Miles Morales Spider Man, I get one of the Batmans. I forget which bad title I get, but one of them. I think I get Action Comics, yeah. oh. one of the Superman mm -hmm. titles. Uh, X Men, mm -hmm. which is cool again. <laughs> um, what else? Did I mention Green Lantern already? Yeah. Suicide Squad. Mm -hmm. And you pick them up in with intention of reading them, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I pick them up with the intention of reading them, and uh, I, I just get really busy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't get time to read comics, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but when I do. I always remember why I love reading comics. And why is it? It's just a great, like, getaway, escapism, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't get to read them because I'm, I'm busy doing all kinds of stuff. Well, and when I do get to read them, I get to focus just on that and forget everything that's going on. That's beautiful. And that's exactly what they're for. I mean, don't get lost in them, but, you know, escape for a while. Yeah. You know? different little worlds every every month i mean i guess one of the main reasons is because you're a very nomadic person you know you're always up and down left and right all around south central east la you know with your main thing which is poetry yeah that's uh, nice. everywhere from from long beach to ball hikes mm -hmm. and from uh from la to sf from montebello to i don't know echo park or something you know a little background for us people that haven't met nikolai um we actually went to college and that's actually where i met you yeah we were all together at uh mm -hmm. under the the guidance of uh mean gene mean gene homie <laughs> at the east elite east LA college in campus news mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. journalism go huskies <laughs> <laughs> have you been there recently i have not been there recently. Mm -hmm. Usually, when I go around there, is when I go to the Vincent Price Museum, yeah, which is where our little bungalow used to be. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. where the, our campus newspaper was located. And we tore it down and built this beautiful museum. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. They always have really good exhibits when you go down there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I haven't been it. I don't know in a month or two. And then yeah. after the little bungalow, they moved us up. Remember, they moved us to that nice building. They moved somebody, not me. Oh, you I were there? Already, gone? I was already gone. Oh. Yeah, we were gone, too. Yeah, you're gone? Yeah. Well, we were there for a bit. We did, we did that winter thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I got to visit, I think, once. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. But that's about it. I just, but it was, like, very super high-tech, mm -hmm. state-of-the-art. Yeah. Why couldn't have that when I was there? Exactly. You know? Exactly. No, I, was, I was, like, the fact that we were in a temporary bungalow. I remember one time we were cleaning out the back, and mm -hmm. there was a date when it was when it was like nineteen forty something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It was a temporary photo. and that's where they kept all the like the, the, the B projects and stuff. Like mm -hmm. the photo people were back yeah. there, you know, the artisty people were all oh, like yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. The photo, the photo lab. Yeah, right next to us and all that. Which was a very awesome photo lab. Oh, yeah, considering like where it was and what it looked like, a lot of good work got produced there. Yeah, totally. You know, I know a couple of people that graduated with certificates from there with photo for as their major, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of cool. And it helped us out with the journalism class because we had to get those photos developed. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, you were writing for journalism 
before that, were you writing? I yeah, know. I mean, I actually, I went to a journalism management school oh. in the Valley. That's where I graduated from. Went to school in South Central for high school in Fremont for two years, and then I transferred and did my last two years at Birmingham, and then, which is right on the borderline of Van Nuys and Encino. And I actually don't think that school exists anymore. Oh. Yeah, I think uh, it turned into a charter school or something. I don't, I don't know. But... but yeah, and then I went to I went to ELEC. So I mean, journalism has always been in your blood, then, like writing. I would say writing. Yeah, mm -hmm. writing. Um, and I thought, I thought when I was younger that I would like be like a freelance writer, mm -hmm. and I, you know, earn a living by writing articles here and there, blah blah blah. Like blah. Clark Kent. And then <laughs> yeah, and then by night I would just be like writing poetry. Huh. And you know. Getting driven bars or whatever, whatever his ports do. <laughs> <laughs> so you wanted to be like Superman the day and Batman at night. Exactly. There you go. There you yeah. go. That's. I mean, you've been writing poetry since then, since forever. Uh, I got into it maybe when I was like thirteen, mm -hmm. and mm, I was like, I was uh, inspired off of the old episode of uh, Roseanne mm. when the youngest daughter darlene yeah that was her name she yeah. had to like write some poem for school the more brooding one yeah mm -hmm. and she's like a tomboy so she wrote a poem about being a tomboy and her mom like really liked it or whatever like everybody loved it and it was like all sentimental hmm. and i was just like man i can do that <laughs> and so yeah that's that's how i got into it and started writing a lot of bad poetry <laughs> and um then I kind of let that go because I got more into activism work and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get back into being a serious poet until maybe 2017, something like that. I was unemployed. Uh oh. And I had free time on my hands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you had feelings and emotions to get out. I mean, those were always there. Those okay. Those always needed to get out. But I ran into this group called Dia Still Arts, the Still Arts. Mm -hmm. who runs uh, free workshops in East LA and in uh, South Central. So I just went to go check them out and started writing again, and they helped me put out my first chapbook. And for those that don't know, what is the DSTL Arts? Um, Distilly, I, you know what? I'm, I would have to look it up because I, I don't know <laughs> what it stands for. That's okay. It but for. they basically help out people who want to. Yeah, what, I mean, what they're there for primarily is to get people either writing or, mm -hmm. or drawing, mm -hmm. you know, people who are, because they work for with everybody from like teens to like much, much older adults, mm -hmm. like senior citizens and whatnot. Um, I mean, they kind of changed their focus a little bit. I mean, they still do workshops, but I think right now their main focus is trying to help people uh, who never went to art school mm -hmm. or got MFAs or anything like that. They help them. Um, make a living with your art. What? They help you, like, make money. That's a thing? You know? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I might have to look into that then. You should. I mean, I've been having a hard time trying to get back into it myself, you know? I used to, I, for journalism, I was a cartoonist, you know, for those that don't know. Um, and I was drawing. I drew some zines with Pete. And after that, I kind of just dropped out. You know, and I, I've been trying to get back in. And we've had ideas, but that's about it. You know? Yeah, I, I I mean, the reason I keep going to these workshops is because there's always like writing prompts, mm -hmm. so it kind of gets the the imagination going. Okay. And you're with a group of people. I mean, mm -hmm. right now it's all done through Zoom, but you're with a group of people, and that kind of helps you, you know, bounce off ideas out of people, and you get to show other people right away what you're working on, and they can give you feedback. Okay. So that that really helps it a lot. And through Zoom, that's because of the whole pandemic that's going yeah. on. You know. I'm hoping. Sometime soon, maybe after the summer, they can go back to meeting in person in yeah. libraries. And how has the pandemic treated you? Just a little bit of that. Well, at the beginning, it was it was going okay for me because uh, a lot of museums and organizations and stuff were moving right away to Zoom to do mm -hmm. events, and they would come to us, and I even got to like make a couple of bucks, you know, organizing mm -hmm. poetry readings and being a part of them and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it actually really hurt my writing. I stopped writing for a long time huh. because I didn't have uh, that immediate support group. 
um, I mean, besides these workshops, I used to also meet with a couple of friends at my local coffee house. Mm -hmm. Padre Coffee over in Compton, we would meet there once or twice a month mm -hmm. to like workshop poems. I'd share with them what I was working on, they'd share with me, and we'd get that immediate feedback. Oh. But that stopped. And so I kind of just felt like I didn't have like, I just kind of just lost my wood right. I lost my wood right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It wasn't like writer's block, because uh -huh. I would still have ideas and stuff like that, but I just wasn't like, oh, let me write this down. Or let me start on this. Yeah. I just kind of like didn't care. I could resonate a little bit with that, you know? I, I kind of talk like people say, I feel you, you know? That's it. You mentioned the Patriot Coffee. I just saw that you had a workshop there. Yeah, yeah. That was my very first workshop, one of the few things I haven't done uh -huh. in the literary world. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I got paid for that. Oh, you know, so big ups. Yeah, like I said, this is if anybody's you know trying to find out how they can you know make a living off of their art, definitely check out the uh, DSTL Arts website. Okay. Um, I was gonna say something else I forgot. <laughs> That's no problem. We tend to going off on tangents sometimes around here. So. Oh. There you go. I was gonna tell you how I, I get back into writing. There you go. Last. Last fall, I got invited uh, to be part of the, mm -hmm. this literary festival in, in Fresno. And it's really cool. Um, Fresno, which, by the way, I think is the fifth largest city in California. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I learned, I thought it was just going to be like a bunch of like farm animals and much more whatnot, <laughs> you know, just like, you know, a yeah, yeah. little country town, but it's not, you know. I mean, it's a, it's a college town, mm -hmm. and they have a really cool arts district. It's called the Tower District. Okay. And so they had this literary festival in that neighborhood, and I think it was like from like 12 to 5, and every hour there's like a, a different reading with different themes, different kind of poets and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So you like pick and choose, kind of like when you go to Comic-Con, there's yeah. all kinds of shit going on. Mm -hmm. So you go to, you pick and choose where you want to go to, and that's huh. like five hours straight. Really and, fun. But that's different locations, okay? Different locations, some of them bookstores, some of them bars, tea, coffee houses, yeah. stuff like that. It was really cool. And so I met a lot of cool people. I saw a lot of people read. And that, like, inspired me to, like, you know what? I'm going to get back into this. Spark that fire. Yeah. Yeah. That is beautiful. I mean, it was already there. It just needed that fuel. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, but that, that's usually the case. I always, I always tell you that every time we go to, every time we do a comic show, I come back wanting to make stuff. Cause you see all the stuff people made, mm -hmm. you see like just the interactions. I don't know. Yeah, you get that fuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you keep just came back from the Latino yeah. one, and you're yeah, you're, oh, this is this is that's how we're gonna get the cape back. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you were there at the cape. I, I've been to each one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you had a good time. Oh yeah, definitely. Would you go back? Of course. There you go. There you go. I mean, that's a shameless plug, but you know, <laughs> we get what we can take. Yeah. Um, but doing all that, I just picked you up from Rearte. Uh, you just did a poetry reading there that was pretty packed when I went there. Yeah, I I hosted uh, our open mic that we have there mm -hmm. once a month. Yeah. First Thursday of every month, we have uh, this event called Future Now, and we have a couple of featured readers, featured poets that are usually picked them out from uh, this uh, from Dryland, mm -hmm. which is a literary journal that where I'm an assistant editor. Mm -hmm. And Viva, who owns uh, Rearte, she's the main editor of Dryland. So yeah, once a month we have features and then we have an open mic. And we started it during the pandemic. So it was ri originally just on Zoom. Right. And then when we started going back to in-person events, she had just opened the store mm -hmm. so um we've been it's been building up slowly like this this last one that you that you got to witness yeah it was packed was the, yeah it was packed and it was like the first one where we had more in real life people than like zoom uh, Cause yeah because we, we it's a hybrid yeah so we still have the uh, zoom yeah and you had some guy from seattle or somewhere up north or some far yeah from, yeah. Yeah. People from all over the, the U.S. come. I think next month one of the features is from Texas. Another one's gonna be from Portland. 
Yeah, and I, I got to listen to some of that, and there was a lot of heartbreak going on. There was a lot of, you know, I guess diversity in the poetry that was going on. Yeah, I mean, there's always, I think, something for everyone. Uh -huh. uh, there's different, not only in the things that people are reading, but also in the way that people read things. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you know, just page poets, which I'm mainly, I'm mainly just a page poet, mm -hmm. you know? And then you have uh, spoken word artists who are more more performance-like, yeah. more performance-based, you know? They raise their voice and they give gestures and yeah, stuff like that, yeah. Exactly. Um, and, you know, just different topics. Uh, like me, for a long time, I'm what people would call a poet of place mm -hmm. because I would do a lot of poems about like LA, about yeah. where I'm from, do a lot of poems about that. Yeah, Felix is our mayor. Yes, yeah. Felix is That's our mayor. That's one of my Angeles. favorite ones. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, when it comes to the poetry, what I want to see, I mean, there was a lot of it, but not much, like more pop culture oriented poetry, like comic books. Why are there people writing poetry about comic books? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. I know this uh, this book I've been trying to get my hands on. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the exact title. I don't remember the author. But I think the word metropolis is somewhere in the title. Mm. So, I mean, and there's there's a couple of people. Who, yeah. Very few, though. Very few. But I do have to say there is actually a lot of pop culture references. Yeah, no, yeah. In poetry, especially contemporary poetry. Uh, like one of my favorite uh, uh, poets, uh, Michael Robbins. The title actually of his first book was uh, Alien vs. Predator. Uh huh. Yeah. You know? Okay. So, the, and he's got tons of pop culture references. Like his poetry is like drenched mm -hmm. in pop culture. So, he was my favorite poet for a good while. See, that, that I like to see because, I mean, that's what the world kind of runs on right now. It's nothing but pop culture. Yeah. And actually, right now, I'm change my focus uh -huh. on my writing. The chapbook that I'm working on right now is poems that are strongly influenced uh, by music. Oh. Yeah. I've not listened to any of that. Yeah, I don't, I've read a few in person here or there, uh -huh. but not many. I know I have maybe about just under 20 poems that are going to be for that uh, chapter collection. Wow. I'm still working on it and I'm a slow writer. Mm -hmm. And then instead of like working on my own writing, I do all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I'm hosting like two different events. I'm going to all these readings. Yeah. And like I told myself, okay, because I had like four different things at the beginning of this month. Right. And I told myself, I just come back, came back from uh, San Francisco. I was doing a reading up there and I told myself, okay, that's it. I just, I got to, focus on my own work yeah. I actually want to write I just don't have time but I got some other I set up some <laughs> other readings already you know like people ask me and it's hard to say no yeah. especially if I like the people and I've never read with them and, and especially if they're inviting me to a brand new venue that I've never read at before yeah you know it's a new audience so I can just read old work you know <laughs> Well, I mean, that, but that's what drives you, though. That's what makes you want to write more, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. You just said, but and then you try to write more, and you don't have time for it. How does that work? I mean, I'm just gonna have to make time. Like I have ideas, and I know yeah. what I want to work on, and I've even started research for a couple of poems. Mm -hmm. But you just got to be able to sit down and do it. And for me, I have to make time to actually go to. Uh, the coffee shop, mm -hmm. the one I mentioned before. That's wow. that's where I go do the majority of my writing. Are you inspired by that? I can't I can't work at home because uh -huh. I get distracted. There's yeah. records, there's movies, there's comic books. Like, I, you know, yeah. I, can't, I gotta go to this comic shop where I, all I have is my laptop. Sometimes I try to not even take the laptop, mm -hmm. just like a notebook, and just sit mm -hmm. and write. And there's usually stuff happening, but it doesn't bother. It doesn't phase me. Like it might even help actually. Oh. And you know what? I, I do the same thing now. That's why I'm here a little bit more. Is is kind of like been my muse, if some people will. You know, that's why I kind of look around. I want to start reading more books, books that I don't buy. I do it here, you know. Before this guy comes in, I'm usually in here perusing through the books, 
you know you got to find that spot where it works for you and like you said at home there's so many distractions yeah you know uh, same thing at home i got comics i got you know toys i got too much stuff going on over there that i need to get out can't do it there you know and when i'm not there reading my comics i'm there working because i'm working from home now so i mean there's distractions left and right you got to get out you got to do it you know i mean i'm excited for whatever you're going to write because music has always been also a big part of my life and and if there's a macy star poem in there i know there is yeah <laughs> i knew it you know i know there is yeah. that that one that one's done that's one of the ones that's been done for a while yeah I think I heard that one when we were at the the backyard. That one guy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah, that's where I heard that, it. That one's online. That yeah, one's online. that one's online. Yeah. Oh yeah, because you didn't bring your stuff that day, so you had it. Yeah, and I actually didn't know that music was such a big part of your life until very recently. Oh yeah, dude. You, you want to go through my record collection? Yeah, I got a big book of CDs and tapes. I got just pulled out all my tapes. I got tons of weird Bon Jovi. I got tons of, you know, sidetracks and migraine weirdness in there. Tons of it. I, I wouldn't even think you would have any room with all the long boxes in there, you know? Yeah, no, they were in a long box. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they were nicely organized in a long box. But recently, like, I, I got to expand my where my area and I got to bring all that stuff out. And instead of working on what I'm supposed to be working, I'm listening to music. You know, I'm putting a tape in, I'm putting a vinyl in, you know, I'm, it just, it won't stop. You know, it's a big, big part of me. Listen to Michael Jackson's Thriller on cassette because it sounds, you know, like it's going, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a trip. It's a trip down memory lane. But again, it's a distraction from what I yeah. should be doing. You know, and sometimes I go home and I'm like, I'm going to edit the podcast. No, <laughs> it doesn't happen. <laughs> You know, I come here, I have to end up coming here. And then I got another distraction <laughs> He's sitting right across from us, you know, but I make two and it's only one distraction here as compared to home, which is tons of them, you know? Okay. So when it comes to music, um, I'm going to ask you this. What would be the best music to read comics to? What puts you in the mood? Um, or do you even do that? I think, I think it'd be anything really. Cause yeah. But I think, I mean, for, I was going to say punk rock, but that's only because the majority of my connection is probably punk rock. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason why. I mean, I have a lot of stuff, different stuff. Uh, there's no film stuff, I have Columbia stuff. I have a lot of hip hop. But, but like know. a fine wine mixed with a good food, can you connect a good record to a good comic? I, I think it, I just doesn't, I don't, I just don't think it, it matters. Mm -hmm. Especially if the book is good, mm -hmm. like it, the music is just gonna be background noise. That's you true. Know? If you're really into the book, yeah, you're not even. A lot of times, I'll, I'll put on. Uh, if I don't put on my record player, I'll have like, I'm, I'll be like watching wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know, wrestling it'll in the just background. Just be like in the background, and I'm just really paying attention. Because I mean, the wrestling is just a bunch of people like just talking nonsense, mm. and so I'm just kind of looking to see who wins yeah you know so if, if you're if the book is good if you're into the book then the music is not even gonna matter right mm -hmm. but you ever had instances where like the music match whatever you're reading or the background mats you know i can't say i have no that sounds like a great experience to have yeah but i haven't had it yet no i've i've had several experiences oh, like yeah? that and i'd be putting on something random and you know be reading something because i'd like to read while again the background mm -hmm. noise and there'll be sometimes it matches um, there was this Tim Sale book that just came out, the, the no. special, the long Halloween special. And it was some John Williams uh, that was going on in the background. And it just kind of went with it. And I was kind of reading t with it, you know. Um, and there's also like artists like jo uh, Kolchaka, who does comics and is also in a band, releases his comics with music and it goes with it, you know, stuff like that. Or Watchmen, I mean, Watchmen where it has the, 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 uh, the overture oh, right. yeah, it has yeah. the overture yeah, yeah, yeah. and if you actually play the overture with the panels it actually goes with it oh, wow. and you can actually you know vibe a little bit on that That's cool. so yeah again it, well, it's music is what yeah, drives it it's it really cool did you that, that watchman show yeah. on hbo yeah trent redner did um the the score for it yeah and i remember he did um an instrumental version of um crap, it was a bowie song um Life on Mars. Okay. 
and it's so cool and like, there's no lyrics or anything but and it fits that whole because it's, it's dr Manhattan's theme right you know it's like it it, it fucking lines it up really well <laughs> well he ends up in mars yeah. and everything. well again the movie itself mm -hmm. it, times are changing that beginning yeah. scene i really love that beginning yeah. scene on that yeah i love the soundtrack too yeah to the movie yeah yeah good stuff right it, it's an interesting soundtrack too because it's like especially like, punk and but there's also like uh what's it, it's, Leonard Cohen. yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's his favorite song he puts that in everything <laughs> hallelujah yeah we can stack cider he's always putting that in everything <laughs> It's a good song. Yeah, it's a great song. Yeah, but, I mean, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, the first I'm gonna tell you the first time I listened to that, mm -hmm. I got goosebumps. Mm -hmm. I I've heard Hallelujah before, yeah. but never like that. Yeah. You know, I was somewhere in high school when I first heard it. You know, and it was just very eerie. You know, very very melodic, and I was like, this isn't the Hallelujah I listened to at church. You know. You're watching Shrek. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I was watching. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I, I was I recently read this book about yeah. Hallelujah, yeah. and it's about Leonard Cohen and Jeff Buckley, uh -huh. and there's like a whole chapter on Shrek <laughs> what? because that that yeah. hel that helped popularize yeah. that song. Yeah, for me, the when I first remembered hearing it, I mean I'm sure I heard it before, but the first time that it really struck because it really went well with it when I was watching it. Was in the OC. Mm. Really? You ever watched the OC? No, not really. Well, yeah. This scene where I think like somebody died when they play that song. Mm. It's what a trip. Yeah. Yeah. Because the OC doesn't hit me as a show that would be playing that. Yeah. I guess. I mean, it wasn't the. I don't think it was the Cohen version. You know, it was oh. probably the, the Jeff Buckley one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little. That's yeah, a little more upbeat then. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because there's tons of versions of it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. There's some that don't even follow the same rhythmic pattern as it yeah and some of them have like different lyrics and whatnot yeah like the shrek one that's a different guy I don't know. I yeah. the name of the mm. like that. It's a different guy. there's another one by catman stevens i never heard that one mm. yeah it's it's a totally different version of it but it it was tripping out because it had nothing to do with it you know i was reading in that book that i think the worst version was from the bono oh really <laughs> <laughs> wow it does like some really weird yeah. like, electronic version I have that like, it's like that '90s, late '90s version of when he was doing all that techno stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that wasn't for me either. No? Yeah, you know, '80s Bono, I'm cool with. Really? That '90s Bono is where I kind of. Oh, he did that one. Uh, what was it the from the Batman soundtrack? The Batman Forever. Yeah, no. You like that song? No, I love that. I love that song. That's a cool song. Yeah, man. no. I mean, like for a long time, I didn't know that was you too. Like, it's, it's a cool song. Yeah, it's a good soundtrack, and but like I, that, you know why? It doesn't mix with the image of Bono I had at, at the time. Oh, so that's why I kind of was like, uh, it's whatever to me, you know. This is Joshua Tree. <laughs> this is not <laughs> Joshua Tree. Joshua Tree. That every track was a hit, right? <laughs> pretty much. Wow, um, but that's that's again, music is is essential when it comes to movies, anything that revolves around me. You know, I'll be in here, music playing. I won't have movies playing. I'll have music playing instead. He'll have to suffer through what I'm playing, <laughs> you know, because I'm in that mood. Let's see, what else can we talk about besides music? Because we could probably talk about music forever. That's true. What have you been, actually, let's talk about more music then. What else have you been listening to? Like when you're on the bus, do you listen to music? Mm, when you're traveling? I used to. Yeah? I used to. Um... And because I don't know if I'm too old or too cheap, I don't have like one of those like music mm -hmm. accounts, like a Spotify or anything like that. Right. I just fucking listen to shit on YouTube. Oh. You know? But I can't even do that anymore because I got a new phone. Uh -huh. I had to get a new phone because my old phone, the last phone I bought was like in 2016. Okay. So I couldn't update any more my, my apps anymore. Mm. There's like no room. So I get a new phone. And I'm like, oh, this phone is pretty cool. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I come to realize you can't plug little oh, yeah. ear things into yeah. it. Bluetooth. Yeah. Now you have to get like a Bluetooth thing. I'm not going to spend money on that. Yeah. <laughs> so I no longer listen to music <laughs> on the training going to work. I just read. 
I just read now. Well, yeah. make your old phone just a music player. You know, that's yeah. what I did with my old one. I just made it into a music player. I didn't think about that. I'm just saying. It's there if you really want to listen to me. There's there's tons of ways, you know. I remember one day being on the train, even hearing like really loud music. Uh-huh. It was the funniest thing ever. I look over and there's this guy, he's sitting there and he had like a tablet uh-huh. and he was playing music, but on the actual screen there was like a boombox <laughs> like image. <laughs> and I was like, are we in the future? Yeah. <laughs> like I said, where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. You know what? Actually, my new favorite band. Uh-huh. Space Kitten. Space Kitten. Space Kitten. Oh my! Yeah, I uh, I just re- heard about them. I haven't I really just randomly discovered them. I was hanging out with my friend in Long Beach, uh-huh. and we went to some tiki bar. Yeah, and it closed down, so we said, oh, "Let's go find somewhere else to get you a drink." And we walked by this place. It's it's mostly like a restaurant. Yeah, but because they were doing music that night, they had a live band. We were mm. like, oh, just going there and we went in there just, just to get a drink but this band like blew me away space kitten they were yeah they were awesome um i, I, I brought their about their vinyl mm-hmm. and a cassette oh and they're like in their i don't know 20s or something mm-hmm. but you can tell that they love music from the 90s because it's very heavily influenced by like grunge, especially. Uh, yeah. yeah, alternative back yeah. in the day. Okay. Yeah, uh-huh. you, you listen to it and hear Nirvana, you hear Sonic Youth. It's really awesome. Yeah, and they play locally around here as well. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, because I think I've seen a couple postings with their name. If it has kittens on it, you know me. I'll I'll, I'll drive through <laughs> it. There's another one called Kitten Next Kitten. Uh, it's a little more, I guess, electronic than that than like. The alternative you're talking about but again had kitten on the cover i'm listening to it you know it has cats on the cover i'm listening to it you know so that, that's kind of i guess judging the book by its cover and just diving into <laughs> it and see what comes out out of it you know and they're from long beach you said i don't think they're from long beach actually i think they're from like downey downey oh. yeah oh that's closer that's neat it's right in between us actually yeah home of the carpenters <laughs> yeah. That's right, yeah very much true <laughs> Oh man, so that's that's new music you've been digging into. Yeah. I, I, like I said, if, if you need help turning your old phone into like a media player, let me know. I'll help you with that part. Cool, thanks. You know, I, that's I. I always found even from the youngest days, when I used to just have a tape player. I used to be on the bus, and that was my best friend. You know, my CD player was second. I had it jacked once when I was on the bus. First thing I did the following day is go buy another one. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I had money saved up from when I was working at the liquor store, and, and I went to buy another one because like, I had a jack. Instead of crying about it, I went to go replace it. Yeah. You know? I would have cried about it. I, well, <laughs> obviously, I did cry about it a little bit, but I got up the next day, and I went to go buy another one, and it was nice and red. And then that one, I kind of left it somewhere, and I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the story of my last CD player. Yeah. But after that, I think I had a Zoom. You know, I had you know ways to just – could... <laughs> Don't judge. Wow. I remember those. Yeah. You know, I wasn't rich enough they're for an really, iPod. Yeah, they were trying to compete with the iPod. Yeah, yeah. there was Microsoft version mm-hmm. of that, you know. And yeah, you know, I had ways to listen to music on the bus because I traveled the bus everywhere and it, I hated the background noise of people just doing nothing. So I had music, you know. Okay. And I know you like music and I know you're willing to travel with music. Yeah. yeah you know. Um, like when you went up to San Francisco, anything good there? Uh, music wise, yeah. I mean, like I said, I I, uh, I went. I mean, the main bookstore where some of these readings took place, uh, Medicine for Nightmare. Yeah. They had a very small section where they were, had vinyl. Mm-hmm. They had a bunch of LPs and two like little boxes of forty fives. Okay. And I had I had been there last month, and I bought. Like two forty fives. I bought them. I bought them for my friend, uh-huh. but she's like, "Oh, I already have those." I think it was like Boo. those three letters of note. I think it was. Nice. Oh, los cadetes, no, los cadetes de Linares. Yeah, that's oh. what it was. So this time, I was like, "Okay, let me take a, photos of some of these," and I sent to my friend. He's like, "Oh, I don't have those. Give me some of those." Yeah. So I, I spent like fifty dollars, over fifty dollars, and 
and 45. It's mostly from my friend, but a couple from me. Nice. Yeah. Like Los Cadetes, was that like the early 2000 songs or albums? Um, I, I don't know. Yeah? I don't know. Because I remember when I worked at the music store, those were pretty big. You know, those CDs, Los Cadetes. So this guy makes sells them like pretty cheap. Uh-huh. It's trying to make them like really accessible. Nice. To, because I mean, we were in the Mission District, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have been up there, but that's like the, East, I guess, I don't want to oversimplify, but Mission District is like the East LA version of, yeah. of North, you know. Okay. So yeah. So you you feel right at home. I'll yeah. feel right at home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that's interesting. I guess we can move on from that. You are actually a dad, and we got Father's Day coming up. Mm-hmm. Any plans for that? Not really. Not really. Not really. They don't really th- celebrate you. Um. Yeah. They'll. They'll always like get me like a little something or whatnot. Uh huh. But not really. Yeah. I mean. I mean, you have some pretty nerdy kids. Yeah. You know, I would be proud of that. <laughs> yeah. No. No. It's. It's. I mean, I don't know. I. I. I, I mean, Pete. Pete. <laughs> I meet up with Pete every other week. Mm-hmm. And I usually bring them. Yeah. I, I'm surprised how passionate your old is is about like the nerdiest things. Uh-huh. I'm just like, wow. Like you're, he was very upset. <laughs> you're <laughs> shaking your head, but I mean, you know, you're what was, proud. What was he was very upset about? Was it Shima Gorat? He was upset about everything. Yeah. Man. He was just like, he was all like, I'm like, but this kid cares about this. That's cool. <laughs> that's how we started. Yeah. You know, that's that's a true nerd. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You gotta be and careful. I just hate how, because I think he just gets too many things from the internet. Because mm. like the internet, everybody hates everything. Yeah, you know, like everybody's complaining about this, this, and that. Well, I love everything. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm easy to please. I guess I don't know. Well, we gotta show him that that's not really the, that's not his opinion. That's the internet's opinion, and he's got to come up with his own. But it's very though he's very passionate about it. Like he like, he'll talk about stuff like oh and I'm like hmm cool <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's very interesting. <laughs> like, he knows about stuff that I'm like how does he know about that? <laughs> the internet yeah yeah, yeah he knows he knows about stuff that yeah. I don't know yeah. but he's absorbing these stuff from the internet so I mean he's just... a big Star Wars guy right he's, yeah. he loves yeah. Star Wars oh wow he knows a lot about Star Wars much much more than me yeah. Way more than me. I mean, I didn't, I didn't watch Star Wars until I was like in my twenties or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and to me, my Star Wars were the prequels. Yeah. <laughs> and that kid, you know, just like, oh, you know, the, the episode of what? Five, six, seven. Five, six, seven. That's yeah. you know, to him, that's the only yeah. Star Wars. You know. That's funny. Wow. I think you might be a little jealous then. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm good. <laughs> well, see, I think we've talked about this before, but like the Star Wars is very interesting. Star Wars has been around for so long that Star Wars, for depending on your age, it's different for different people, you know? Yeah. But in that case, his Star Wars would be the one that he yeah, likes. Think, or like the newer one. Yeah. But, you know? but the internet yeah. taught him to yeah. hate this. Yeah. You know? We got to turn that around. Which is funny because I think. Um, I'm not, I'm not too into Star Wars. Like, I like Star Wars. I always liked Star Wars. I've never been, like, hardcore about it. And I've never gotten around to watching all the Clone Wars and all that stuff. But they say that, like, that really adds to the prequels. Like, if you watch that, it makes the prequels, like, better than the originals. Well, it ties in and it's going yeah. on. It actually weaves yeah. in and out of them. And they watched all that Clone Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars yeah. and all that stuff. So, when we watch the shows, which mm-hmm. I really like, like, you know, The Mandalorian, Obi Wan, mm-hmm. and one of those characters from one of those shows comes up. They get like, oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's pretty cool. Man. That's cool. Yeah, I would say that's that's pretty awesome. There, See, it's funny. I always talk about people like when it comes to comic book movies, the same thing. You know, like, like if you go, you can go into not reading anything. But if you're reading comics, you're like, oh, I know who that is. I know who that's gonna be. <laughs> or like, you know. yeah, you you're you're already getting yeah. set and ready, and you're salivating, yeah. you're rubbing your hands together. I think like uh, like right before the pandemic hit. I went to go see uh, Bloodshot. It's a Valiant comic. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've never read a Bloodshot comic. Yeah. <laughs> I've never read a Bloodshot comic. But I, I knew kind of what his deal was. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching it and just kind of like, oh, it was cool. Yeah. But in the back of my head, I was like, if I knew who the character was, I probably would have gotten way more out of this movie than I would, you know. Yeah. 
It was Vin Diesel? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. It was... It, is valiant again you know my it sense. was interesting but yeah. i didn't know how they were going to build a universe on that like it was like oh this is kind of cool they're going to build the universe they were they were saying shit up they're like <laughs> was that like an exo man of war yeah yeah and they were they were teasing i mean i didn't get the references but i don't know <laughs> oh man and there was one dude i remember like he was blind uh-huh. but they they plugged his freaking brain into this robot and so basically he had cameras like all over his body and i was like Okay. <laughs> Boy. And we were talking to someone, they're like, oh, that's a big character in the comics. I'm like, really? Oh. <laughs> no idea. Yeah. I'm as lost as you are. I, I, I again, I was never a big Valiant guy yeah. myself. I never even tested stuff. He was like a walking YouTuber? <laughs> Basically. Like, what was the thing? You couldn't sneak up on him or whatever. Like, or he could see multiple shit. Like, uh, they, would... okay. And he had like a little drone he could shoot out. Mm-hmm. And then he could see through the drone. That... It was really weird. <laughs> Did they like TikTok dances? Yeah, right. Tease. <laughs> That's what we should do. We should have a character, right? A new character, like yeah. come live stream, right? Yes. <laughs> That's a cool go. name, right? There you go. There you go. Pam pending. Pam pending. <laughs> so, I could definitely see that in right. Batman comics. Yeah, right, right. Well, we got to update comics, and that's a good yeah. way of doing it, you know? What did you remember? Um, I don't know if you remember this, but like, Everyone they always talk shit about how modern comics are too woke or whatever. Mm-hmm. They always bring up this new Warriors book that never happened. Mm-hmm. They advertised it, and the pandemic hit, and then they were like, "No, we're not doing this." Which book? This new Warriors, and it was like a brand new. It was like the original New Warriors. They were gonna raise like the next generation. Well, like Speedball. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. but <laughs> there was a character, and her she had like ice powers, and her name was Snowflake. <laughs> and then they were, and she had a twin brother. I don't know what his deal was, but his name was Safe Space. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and then there was like a, like, a, like a hacker kid, and his name was uh, Screen Time. And people were like, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> it, it was to prevent, I'm guessing, I, something. I guess. Well, my favorite one was there was a vampire. He was like this gothic vampire dude, right? Uh-huh. And he, he had... He had the same virus that Morbius had, uh-huh. and so he, he got the treatment. He turned to fucking vampire, right? And his name was B negative. <laughs> <laughs> so it was meant for younger, oh, the yeah, younger, yeah. younger audience. Yeah, but people fucking hated on it so bad, and it never came out. Like Marvel was like, "No, we're not doing this." What did Wendy the artist on that? I don't remember. Man. Like it was funky looking too. Like, uh-huh. yeah. What do you think of all that whole wake, walking space, and all that? I don't know. I mean, I work with young people uh-huh. who are like way more into this. Yeah. You know, I like I have to make sure I know people's like preferred pronouns. You yeah. know. Yeah. So I'm kind of just used to it now. Yeah. You okay. Know? Sometimes I think stuff is a little over the top and I think I'm maybe I'm just like too old school and I don't just, I just don't understand these kids or whatever. Mm. Yeah. But I mean it's not it's not bothering me. It's not know? bad either. Yeah. I mean we're just trying to build them better than we were, yeah. right? I mean that's the whole point of it. It's just, you know, there's so much out there we were kind of held back a bit yeah. and we kind of want to give these kids more range but at the same time letting them know it's okay to yeah. be whatever you want to be. You know, when we were little, they told us, yeah, you can grow up to be whoever you want to be, but you got to have within these limits, Yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And now it's like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Just make sure you do the work and don't be a dick about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Think about it. Like, when we were in, even in high school, like it was a big deal. We had a gay character in a comic. Yeah. Like, that was like a huge thing. And now it's like. A whole month. A whole month, right? <laughs> and multiple books. Multiple yeah. books. He actually picked up a couple of those pride books. I saw them in your pile. Got at least one, I know that. Yeah. You know, but yeah, it's it, it just changes, right? It evolves. You yeah, know? it's Superboy or Superman mm-hmm. is gay. You know, one of the Robins is gay. Yeah. You know, why? Why not? <laughs> but this is the thing, though. Like, I, I always find it funny when people complain about comics being woke. And it's like they've always have been, though. Like, you know, it's always been a thing in comics. You mm-hmm. know, they've always kind of tried to be a little ahead of the curve. Yeah. You know, and now that more people are into it, more people are actually being able to see that. And that's why it's become a bigger thing. You know, I don't think it's a bad thing. Like no. I said, you know, I, I think it's a prog- progression, if you will. I, yeah. 
Like right. I think it's it's more of like more people are are, being, are getting access to it, uh-huh. and so there's more people there's more people can play. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like it's okay to not like be into it or whatever. Yeah, but there's really no reason to like be all up in arms about it. Yeah. Know? Yeah. You know, like, oh, we gotta cancel this book, or I'm mm-hmm. gonna stop reading Marvel forever. And you're like, yeah, that's just going too far. Yeah. What thing the like the super the Superman and the Jonathan Kent thing? I always find it really funny because people are like, oh, they're gonna put a, a you know mature audience label on this, and they're gonna look at, I don't need my kids seeing that. And I'm like, dude, they're not gonna show them banging. <laughs> like, you know, like... I mean, it's mostly <laughs> grown ups walking in here anyway. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a very children now. There's gonna be kids here. They're gonna be grabbing like Donald Duck or American yeah. Time or something. You know? Yeah. Sonic. Yeah. Mango. It's funny because we had this one mom that comes in here, and her kid's kind of young, and she wanted to pick up that Jurassic League for him because she's like, "Oh, he loves dinosaurs." And we were telling her, "I'm like, well, it's a little violent." And just take a look at it first. And she flipped her. She's like, "I seen worse." <laughs> <laughs> on the on the street. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Dinosaur blood, that's okay. That's yeah, fine. They're not real people. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, again, that comes into yeah. personal choice. Mm-hmm. You know, he obviously says it's okay, then yeah. it's okay. Yeah. The kid might like it, might not at the end of the day. You know, he might be like, oh, I'm against oh, yeah. dinosaur violence yeah, forever. Too much. Too much for... so I, I had an interesting question for you. You said you, you, you got into activism at a young age. So I always find it interesting that with the people that are very like negative about you know um, the LGBT stuff and stuff, they read comics and like I think like comics is very like good guys and bad guys you know, it's, you know and it teaches you like you know to you know what got you into comics cartoons mm-hmm. oh. cartoons I was uh, I was expecting this question a lot earlier actually <laughs> which is why I had saved something but basically i remember when i was really young i don't don't know how old i was but i must have been really young and i just remember watching those old 70 spider-man oh yes and then later on when i got older there was a spider-man as an amazing friend yeah yeah and i think right when i got into comics that other really cool spider-man comic was already uh, i mean cartoon was already yeah 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 and so the very first comic book that I bought oh. was uh, Spider-Man 37. Oh, nice. Part, Mag- Maximum part, Carnage. <laughs> Maximum Carnage Part 12, I think, or 14 yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I didn't even know comic books, comic book stores existed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I bought this out of some kid. Yeah. Oh. You know, some kid was like, hey, look at this comic. I know you're into like, you know, comic book Spider-Man or whatever. I'll say this comic for like I don't know two bucks or something, and I'm pretty sure I overpaid. Like the, fucking, <laughs> the cover price here is like one seventy five. Oh, yeah. So I probably gave this guy like two or three dollars. Yeah. Because I don't have access to these things, and yeah. I don't know how much they cost. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm I'm sure that's I still have this book by the way, and it's nice. signed. Oh. Signed by the the writer. Who who was it? Uh, I don't remember. I mean, yeah, it might have been that guy uh, who did that. Craven the Hunter story. Oh, uh, crap, I'm totally I know you're talking about it too. Dem- Demetrius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, think, I think he wrote that book. Yeah, and he wrote the Maximum Carnage series? No. Maximum Carnage was, was written by like five different people. A bunch of writers. <laughs> yeah. A bunch of writers. Yeah. And it was a weekly event through the Spider Man book. Oh, and okay. And there was four Spider Man books with different creative teams for each book. So they just somehow tied in. Yeah. No, it's really confusing because the tone changes and like. Yeah. <laughs> See, I didn't read Maximum Carnage. I went straight to the video game. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah that's it. Well, this was a great book to pick up because it had a bunch of characters in it. Yeah, yeah. Captain America was in it. And like an Iron Fist and Token Dagger. Yeah. Oh. A bunch of bad guys were in it. I'm like, oh, shit. Was it that summer event or like that major event of the year? I mean, like I said, I just bought it out of some kids. So yeah. he probably he might have gotten it like a, a year ago or who knows. Yeah. Who Wait, knows, did you know? go afterwards to get it signed? Uh, much, much, much later. I got to sign that at the shrine. Oh, for yeah. those who remember the shrine, we'll talk about that. Later. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, uh, I think a little bit later, I found a comic shop in Huntington Park mm-hmm. over somewhere off of Pacific. Okay. And 
it was a pretty cool shop. It was not big, and they carried a lot of titles, but they would have like very few copies. Mm-hmm. It had <laughs> that one section that was adults only. Of course. You know, and they sold a lot of the uh, cards. Oh, that was big at back the then. time. The comic book cards were, were big, yeah. and I probably spent more money on that than, than actually. Yeah. Cards. Yeah. So whenever I got a chance, I would buy a couple of things there. But mostly, I would get my comic kind of books from the fucking uh, thrifty. Mm. Thrifty. The thrifty. The magazine. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And the particular thrifty that I would go to, the Rite Aid, mm. um, mostly had DC books. Mm-hmm. So I would just buy whatever they had. Mm. Catwoman. I can't move it back because I had to realize it. I was just say there, my nose was whistling. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> no, like, oh. All right. And you were talking about the Rite Aid. Yeah, I would go and, uh, to the Rite Aid and buy whatever DC Comics they had. Singles? Yeah, singles. And you can re- you can rely on them to have, like, the next issue yeah. the next month, you know? Yeah. But, so I would just get random stuff, Robin, Catwoman, Superman, whatever. Yeah. And whenever I could, I would go to the comic shop. And it was around that time that, um, what, was it, what was that series called? The, they stopped the X-Men, Age of Apocalypse. Oh, yeah. Age of Apocalypse. And that was fucking awesome. Yeah, as and a future then, and all that. And yeah, I, I was able to buy a bunch of those. And I think... Age of Apocalypse is definitely still one of my my favorite uh, things about comic books. Mm-hmm. The Generation Next miniseries, yeah. especially. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I I would say besides music, I draw a lot of inspiration from that. From the Age of Apocalypse. From well, from Generation mm-hmm. X, from those mm-hmm. four issues. Yeah. So fucking sad. Yeah. Like so fucking sad. That ending, and. Uh, I, I think I told Pete this one time I got to meet the the writer mm. and also uh-huh. trying, <laughs> and he signed them for me and you know I was at I was at talking to him about how fucking sad it was he, he told me that at the time he was writing it he was going through a breakup oh and that's why he like deliberately like made it like hella fucking sad wow. And and so at that point you basically kind of after that I'm sorry when my mind just went blank um, I guess how can I explain it the books that made you sad do you resonate more towards those I think so I think so and I mean I just like it when something can capture. An emotion because mm-hmm. Age of Apocalypse mm-hmm. itself was pretty yeah. downer, yeah. Book. like all that yeah. stuff was, was pretty, a rough book, yeah. Man. You know, some people didn't have one eye, some people didn't have hands, you know, <laughs> people were dead, you know, some people killed their own wives, killed, yeah. yeah. See, and then you have to remember, like, it started with the ultimate 90s character, Onslaught. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, like that, that was the beginning of that era of like, and Onslaught was meant to kind of regulate yeah that was the whole point of onslaught yeah. right to regulate all the mutants but he ended up turning right yeah. charles and all that what was his name was it the apocalypse had a son right it was a holocaust holocaust, holocaust. yeah yeah he was also a donor yeah, yeah. but it was really like it, it, it brought about all those, those great names like i said love x-man and it looks like he was cool yeah and it was just that whole era of like that and like I guess I don't know, like like punk rock type comic where mm-hmm. it was like fucking throw it at the wall, whatever sticks, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, they brought it back several mm-hmm. times. Mm-hmm. Or tried to bring it back several yeah. times. I mean, they don't live up to that original storyline. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, they tend to have like a weird anniversary where they try to bring it back, and yeah, it doesn't really work. No, I know. I we, pick- get, we could get a blink out of that, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, it became really popular. Yeah, I have that figure at home. It's one of my favorite figures. You know. I, I, it was blink. I was, uh, I was like, "Oh, that's the Psylocke of that world." But no, it wasn't. No, it was a totally different yeah, character. Yeah. And uh, that saber tooth. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, that was one of my favorite saber tooths. What was it, Dave? We had the little kid with him. Uh, wild, wild, wild child, child. Yeah. wild child. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was just a little thing he would throw at yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
But then you also got to forget, we can't forget the ultimate X Men bad guy. Was he the Sugar Man? <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> I never got his deal, right? Yeah, he, he can shrink, I guess. Yeah, and they keep bringing he's him like back. Hiding in somebody's boot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, nobody asked for him. Yeah. And they, nobody the, said, oh, this guy's awesome. Please bring him back. Yeah. <laughs> They're always bringing him back. That's the one that looks like Modoc, right? Kind of. He's a, he's a big bad guy. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember. The Sugar Man. Yeah. Yeah. Sugar Man. Trip out. <laughs> Did you ever did you ever get the the Jim Mafu Generation X? Yeah. Book? Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, trying to remember if I got that. I no, I don't think I got that from anyone else. Mm-hmm. I got it from the Fantastic Store. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you went to the mm-hmm. Fantastic Store. No. It was this little store right on Hollywood and Highland. Oh. Before they with, gentrified Hollywood. With the, the thing on the roof? Yeah. 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 Oh, you right have the been corner, there. Really. And it was it was a combination of record store mm-hmm. and comic books. Really? Yes. I'm just saying they could yeah, work. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. They didn't have mm-hmm. a lot of vinyl. It was mostly like CDs, uh-huh. but you know, they had vinyl and cassettes. And you know, the comic books was like one of the sorry selections of, of books oh. you've ever seen. Like, I probably started going there after their heyday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? But I would always just like spend time just digging around trying to find something and right. that's where I, I found that well in that area you had golden apple and meltdown like just a couple of straights down yeah. you know yeah. so i mean you really couldn't compete yeah no it was, it was a cool I, I went there like once or twice yeah i just remember it stuck on my head they had a big thing i don't know if it was just his head over the full body it, uh-huh. was, it was on the roof was it some kind of dragon or some kind yeah. of evil something yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah see i never ventured that far yeah. either so at a young age. I it mean, was right off the train station. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, so it was ideal for me. Yeah, like right where the Hollywood Highlight is now. It's uh-huh. like it's between the two streets. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Like where that. Like a restaurant now or something. Like it's that. kind of going up a hill, right? You're, you're heading towards. No, it's right across. Yeah. Right across the street from there. It was like right up, almost right at the corner. Yeah, I remember that place. So you, did you go to different comic shops? Like. Mm. Guess to get your books, your funny books? Mostly I used to go to your. What was the name of the uh, comic galaxy? Comic comic galaxy. galaxy. Because I had I had stopped. I had stopped like reading comic books until you guys started working there. Really? Yeah. And then one of the first things I bought was you recommended uh that Spider Man book by uh the Dotsons. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, Oh, this book is this much, but you want it all give it like five bucks or whatever. <laughs> Always hustling. Yeah. And that was in college? Yeah, that's mm-hmm. what we're still at you like. Yeah. Yeah. And we actually, when we worked there, we actually started working the shrine. Let's go back into that. You said you've been there. How many times did you go? Every month type of thing? Uh, I would try to go every month. I mean, people called it ghetto con or whatever, <laughs> yeah. but I thought it was cool. Yeah. I they would cool. always have, they always managed to have like good guests. Yeah. Yeah. And like uh, good giveaways if you. <laughs> Paid a little extra, or whatever mm-hmm. you know. The posters, the, yeah, the little posters, toys, sometimes. Posters. Um, oh, I remember when they had the dude from uh, the Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah. He signed my comic. I don't know where that's at, but I'm sure it's worth some. I went to that one too. I was there. Yeah. You know? And that's where your old boss would be at. And mm-hmm. I always like go buy a comics from. Did you buy from Juan also right there at the shrine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. It's in the. Been, yeah, known you since then. Then, yeah, what's that's that's a long time. Mm-hmm. You know who used to go there too? Um, did you ever go to uh, Trash City Records? Yeah, yeah. They used to be there. Really? One of the guys used to be there. He used to sell like pins and patches and whatnot. Ruben? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that's the main guy, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I, there was two guys. I don't remember, but one of the younger one, the younger skinnier guy. I think that was him. He used to always be at the shrine. Yeah. yeah. Huh. That's crazy because yeah. Trash City was right around the corner from the mm-hmm. old store from Galaxy. It was, yeah. yeah. It used to be right behind Elac. Yeah. And then yeah. it moved over to, what street is that? Garfield? Garfield, Garfield yeah. yeah. No. Mm-hmm. You know what's funny? I, it was around the corner, but I would rarely go in there because we never see eye to eye with those people. Well, I mean, yeah. like I said, my vinyl connection is mostly punk rock. So yeah. I, I'd always go in there. I was going there yeah. as much as I could. One of the best records I bought there was. Uh, Something from the Scudos. Oh. Which I bought for like less than twenty dollars and it's like worth like probably like three times that. 
bro well, right now we're seeing a big resurgence when it comes to those vinyl yeah, albums yeah. you know anything old is new now so if everyone wants it you know i've been trying to get my hands on um this one what's it called uh it's a uh, music to make love love by i don't know love age you didn't get the repress i wanted that so bad and by the time i realized it was out it was gone what yeah dude and now if i want it i want to pay 50 60 dollars and up well i think it's worth it you think so i yeah I, it's one of my favorite I albums know. you know i mean the original yeah no which i've seen yeah i've seen it's you know spend at least like 500 right yeah i saw one lowest as 200 bucks and i was tempted but i didn't get it and the only reason it went down in price because of this repress mm. but before that it was like 600 bucks yeah and the repress is like a blue color or something yeah. right yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, I don't know how I missed that boat, but I'm kicking myself for it. It's one of my favorite albums of all time. Yeah, it's a good album. Yeah, the music itself, and it got, uh, what is it? We uh, Like the, the little snippets in between, yeah. you know? And it's that, funny. It's funny, yeah, thank you. You know, and that's what kind of sold me. It's well, the first time I've heard something like that was that album. Yeah. And after that, you know? I haven't heard anything like that ever. Yeah. I mean, Handsome Boy tries to do a couple of that, you know, like with the little jokes in between and stuff like that. I know you got that for a record store day. I don't even, I never even heard of it before. No, really. It's, it's, it's on the same level, I would think, but not as good, mm. you know. It, it has the jokes. It has the good music in it, but it's nothing compared to that one, you know. Um, so, I don't know. That's just me. When it comes to music, I, I get to be a little picky and I get to, you know, <laughs> I get to enjoy what I enjoy. And that was one of the few albums I had on CD and would probably burn through on repeat. Did you ever have a membership to like Columbia House? <laughs> yeah, sir. Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah. 15 <laughs> CDs for a penny. Did any of you guys ever put his penny in? <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> they had my name like in three different languages they had you know addresses of my neighbor because my neighbor wasn't live i didn't have a neighbor there so i sent them there picked them up and just took them over to my house and they would probably send the bill next door you know um and i was then, and then they would get the fucking companies on you yeah yeah, yeah. No. people would go and you know come down to the house and be like i don't know who lives there i don't know i'm sorry i don't know <laughs> also there was um my mom worked for this lady in a, an apartment building and i had to be there for most of the time with her um during summer so i ordered columbia house there and since you couldn't leave them in the mailbox they would leave them in the bottom so when i would see a columbia house one swipe 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 take them upstairs and then just open them up take what i needed throw away what i didn't you know <laughs> even though i ordered most of that myself <laughs> you know but yeah there was ways you could get those 15 for a penny i mean you really didn't have to do much yeah you didn't have to do much yeah. Yeah. Well, they were counting on you just being lazy because it's like they, they would send you random shit. Like, it's in, yeah. you keep it, you have the paper, it's in the bag. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Well, most of the time, I was able to like send a little thing back. I'm like, no, I don't want that. Yeah. But every time something would slip through. Yeah. No, no, as I'm saying, I would leave it in the apartments and they would send those individual mm -hmm. ones and I'd pick those up and I'd just be like, if I want it, I keep it. If I didn't, I'd throw it away. And who are they going to bill? I'm not going to be there. I don't even live there. Exactly. <laughs> Damn, are we just admitting to that? Never mind. I, I mean, admit nothing. I don't think, do they exist? I don't they think exist so. anymore, right? I have no idea. Oh, I mean, with digital music now, I mean, no yeah. one does that anymore, okay. right? <laughs> 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 had I known, I would have ordered a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Even more. You know what I also would do? In high school, I had so many of those things, some in repeats, that I would sell them. People would buy them. You know, I'd sell them for five bucks or whatever, and people would actually buy the CD that I had 20 times for five bucks. Hey, you would have kept them would probably worth more. Yeah, I mean, I kept some of them. And what I did was instead of, you know, keeping them in cases, I ended up putting them all in folders, you know. So. Uh, I don't know what got me thinking this week. I was uh, I, I suddenly remembered that there was like a, this one Ozzy Osbourne album that I like. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting the tape from Columbia House because I had like some old, much, much older cousins that were like into metal. I wasn't really into metal, but mm -hmm. they were like really into metal. But I liked this album, Osmosis. Ah. Uh, and then I went on, uh, on uh, what was the name of that website we all go to? Discogs. Discogs. And I was like, I wonder how much 
the vinyl for this is worth. It was released in 1995. Yeah. Mm -hmm. $300. Nice. $300. I don't know about Discog sometimes, man. Sometimes it tells me it's worth so much. And then I look at my vinyl or something on my tape. I'm like, that's not worth that much. I got it for like $5, you know? I got it for free. It can't be worth that much, you know? I don't know. It's, it's It trips me out, that Discog. So it's in the price ranges, sometimes yeah. it varies from, yeah, you know? And then people that sell it, they sell it for ridiculous amounts or $42. What's the thing, man? Like, I think with any collectible, like... If you once you sell it, mm -hmm. that becomes the price. You know what I mean? Like, if there was that whole story about the the, the New Year's '98 and the first Deadpool, uh -huh. someone totally sold it for like three grand on eBay, and then they, that just became the price, and it was just ridiculous for a while. Well, that's what they do with Pokemon cards, yeah. also. Yeah, it's a game of man. It's worth whatever someone's willing to pay for it. You know, I got a Charizard first edition Hollow Foley. How much are you willing to pay for it? 10 bucks. <laughs> see, see? It's worth 10 bucks. I, I, I just don't know. Like, I didn't get into Pokemon cards until like the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Me and my kids needed something to do. Okay. And so we just started buying them. And yeah. you actually play or do you just collect? Oh, we play. Okay. We play. I mean, we haven't played in a while, but mostly to play. Because when they came out originally, uh, me and my little brothers, we joined the league at Toys R Us. Oh, wow. So we would go on Saturday or Sunday, I forget what day it was, but we'd go and play other kids in the league. And my medium brother he got all the badges you know which means you know he went every week and battled the gym leader and did all the crazy stuff but that was in the early days so that's why we have all these old old rare ones even though they're used they were to sell them to a boxer who can like wear them as a chain oh yeah. my god <laughs> that is a thing i, I know it's a yeah. thing but i don't know i told my brother since he's the one who has the bulk of the collection yeah go ahead you know, sell those, but I don't think he's ever going to get rid of them. He loves Does them he too much. Does he have those badges, and are, are those worth something? Oh, I have no idea. Only he would know, but I probably think they would, because they were like Toys R Us exclusives or whatever, and you can only get them at Toys R Us events. Which doesn't even exist anymore. That, exactly, so they might be even worth more now, you know? Mm -hmm. But yeah, he, he was, he was, okay, put it this way. We were like his his Mickey and he was like the main Rocky guy, you know, because we would <laughs> go and bank on him playing, you know? I actually made shirts uh, that in um, high school and we made some team rocket shirts you know it had jesse james and meowth on it that i actually drew yeah. you know I, I think i still might have yeah. one it's all faded but it's still there and that's what we would wear to go play pokemon <laughs> cards you know so i mean like i said it's worth whatever you're willing to pay for it now you should, uh, should make a shirt for you and pete when you do your podcast <laughs> there you go <laughs> what would be the design though that i don't know that i don't know I mean, a couple of microphones or something. <laughs> little happy faces on them. A little like scribbly with a beer, one with a beer, one with a bald head on it. That could work. Um, I, I want to make a hat. Because oh, I always wear hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's just weird thoughts I have sometimes. That hat. That hat. Trucker hat. <laughs> with the mesh in the back? Yeah. I hate those because then when you get in the sun too long, you get the little dots in your head. And you're like, why <laughs> yeah. do I look that way? Oh, yeah. The sun. You get that mesh fucking sunburn? Yeah. Because nice. I wear them tight and I wear yeah. them fitting. It's, oh yeah. It doesn't work for me. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make it for you. you no, I'm, yeah. I'm not a big hat guy anymore, man. What are you talking about? You wear hats every day? No. Well, yeah, with hats. Yeah. Like, yeah. You got like hats hanging on your hat I rack right now. The hat rack. <laughs> yeah. That, that's us when it comes to Pokemon. And I'm glad you kids didn't play with it, though. And most kids are like nowadays just collect it just yeah. for the hell of it. They'll go and they'll buy you know something from Target and they'll hold on to it for yeah, too long. I think it's more adult man to do that. Oh <laughs> no, I've seen kids. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I got to go to Target once and this kid just went, Oh, they have them here. And he got like four of those boxes and he went up to his mom and said, I gotta buy these. And the mom goes, Okay, put them in the cart. That's and crazy, she bought man. them. Put them on eBay and we got them. <laughs> yeah, Probably. you know, yeah. made some bank somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, unboxing's a big thing too on the in the um, YouTube. So yeah. yeah, I don't get it, but people like it. I, I dig it. Yeah, I, I, like, I like those unboxing videos. Then that. what's the what's the draw to that? What what makes you want to watch those? Mm, I just want to see what they get. Yeah, that's why I like Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you just be there for the ride, I guess. Right? right? Okay. I mean, it's an experience, I guess. I don't really think about it, like. You know what we should do with the comics on Tuesday? Yeah, no, Muddy has suggested that, but yeah. I just feel like it'd be boring. <laughs> like, would you watch it? 
Like boxing, how would that work? Like me unboxing the comic? Yeah, taking out the comics and what's new, yeah, what's going to be weird. cool. You know? I don't know, man. Cool. I just... Try it out. I, I feel like I've been doing it so often. Uh-huh. Doing like a little preview, like, oh, this week's one? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what a tease. <laughs> I feel like I've done it for so long. It's just, it's just like, I don't even do it. I don't even think when I do it anymore. Yeah. I just think, ah, this people, I don't know. I don't think people would enjoy that. <laughs> I don't know. People out there in podcast land, would you enjoy Pete unboxing comic <laughs> books on a Tuesday night? night? Let us know. Yeah. yeah. There you go. We'll find out. Get ready for that. And then like a video of making bags and boards. Racing. Bag and, board, <laughs> bag and board races. Today, uh, Mari had us racing, making bags and boards. And I gave him a head start. And I still won. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying. Well, it's funny. Because we, like, we, we talked about how like, we used to trick kids into doing that. Like, and, we give it, and she told him, like, all right. <laughs> like, she used the same tricks on us. It was weird. It worked, though. It totally worked. You know? <laughs> But that's us. No. You, know, you gotta find your entertainment in the comic book store, man. It's just, you know. Yeah, whatever works for you. You gotta find something fun to do. You mean reading isn't entertaining enough? It is, but, you know. <laughs> I think I've, I've gotten spoiled. Like, I'll, I'll get the books early, and then I'll read them, and then come one time, like, I don't think I'll read. <laughs> Which is lucky, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Hashtag blessed. My own, my first world problems. <laughs> First world nerd problem. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> you yeah. know, you got the world as your oyster. Yeah. You're not eating it. Yeah. I mean, but you know, I, I, I try, because I've met people who have owned comics for a long time. Yeah. And they're just like, I hate this shit. Like, I don't, you know, <laughs> and I don't ever want to be that guy. Yeah. But there are some times where, like, I'm like, looking at the shop, I'm like, ah, I don't want to, nothing, nothing catching my attention. <laughs> Lame. That's why you need to add records. Yeah, that's true. See? <laughs> Spice of life gives variety. Have you read everything? Yeah. Have you listened to that everything? True. That is true. Have you listened to it on vinyl? <laughs> and right now there's tons of, I was telling him, there's tons of soundtracks for the comic movies. You know, uh, the Suicide Squad is a pretty good soundtrack, if you ask me. The latest one with Doja Cat and all that. Excellent freaking soundtrack, you know? And then there's like movie soundtracks. Mm-hmm. You can... Fucking fill up the store just with fucking John Carpenter. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Those are very eerie. Very yeah. yeah. That is always a trip. I only have like one John Carpenter thing. I know they're releasing a new They Live this week. Ooh. Yeah. It's like forty bucks. So oh, see that bums me out. Yeah. I I just ordered the Dark Man soundtrack. Oh shit. Yeah, I, I had to. Like Danny Elfman. Yeah, <laughs> I had to. I don't know why the art inside. I'm like. Oh, Go. Go. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, I mean, to me, like I said, music and comics have always gone kind of hand. You know, music and comics. I think that's that's my niche, if you will, or niche as people would pronounce it. <laughs> but yeah, but that's that's pretty much how it goes around here. Um, so what else are you going to be doing up in the future now? Um, I got a couple of events lined up for this month but okay. then i really got to get back into just like writing mm-hmm. you know there's things i have obligations i still got to host okay mm-hmm. the first thursday of every month at the health and Boy heights the open mic mm-hmm. and then my own reading series that i just started in long beach uh, page against the machine that's the second thursday okay of every month so that i still have to do i still have to curate most of most of those and show up and and host and whatnot. Okay. Uh, besides that, I, I think I need I need to just focus on on writing. Yeah. Yeah. And I want I'm very excited about the music poetry. You know, I like you said, I've only heard that Macy Star one, and I think there's potential with music and poetry. You know yeah. that that's that's your you know comics and music. You know. Um, any more questions for Leah yeah, right now? Yeah. All right. Well, coming to an end here. Tell people where they can reach you at your um, handle and all that. Yeah. You can find me on the gram or on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hello, Kami. H e l l o k o m m i. Hello, Kami. Kami with a K. Kami with a K. Kind of like Hello Kitty. Yes. Okay. Kind of like Hello Kitty. But only more Kami. But more Kami. <laughs> we didn't even touch on that yeah, subject. Yeah, yeah. The man loves his Hello Kitty and his Sailor Moon. That'll have to be for. 
different podcast. <laughs> for sure, for yes. sure. I'm, I would definitely have you again because there's so much we could have touched on uh, when it comes to that. I mean, we're dudes into girly stuff. Yeah. I mean, say we because I'm into it as well. One interesting thing is some, sometimes I'll meet people in real life after like mm-hmm. knowing them on, on Twitter. For, yeah. I'm mostly on Twitter. You yeah. Know? And I've been on there for a long time. And I think I, I told Pete <laughs> recently working on twitter now it's like yeah. it's weird like, oh yeah that's my playground and mm. all of a sudden here comes rick yeah but, he, but he's you've taken flight you're you know how somebody's good at twitter when they're retweeting cool shit yeah right? yeah that then i want to retweet okay you know, so. wait m- am i rick yeah oh yeah, yeah. i forgot it until he knows me as it rick <laughs> yeah yeah like we used to pete and rick yes mm-hmm. it's again for another one for another podcast <laughs> But what was, what was my point of that? They oh, yeah, I'll meet people in real life, uh-huh. mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh, they're dude," <laughs> or, <laughs> or, "Oh, you're straight," oh. <laughs> <laughs> which I always think is like funny, you know. Yeah. Hey, man, there it takes everyone to make the world go around. You yeah. know, different types to make the world go around. Oh, just a weirdo. And again, <laughs> hello, Kami. You can find them on Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you again for being on the show. I really appreciate that. You're my favorite poet laureate. I don't know if people don't call you a laureate, but I do. Thank you. You know, <laughs> I'm just saying. All right. Thank you very much. Again, have a good night, people. Morning, afternoon, whatever you're doing. Thank you. And bye. <laughs>